Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for being here today. And my name is Emma, and I'm going to be presenting um, our uh, project with Min, and we are from Luther College. So our project is titled An Integrated Economic Epidemiology Model and aiming to minimize COVID-19 burden of disease and economic growth trade-off. And from now on, we're going to call it an EE model for short. And then so first, um, I want to just give a brief introduction. So as you all know, COVID-19 is the greatest outbreak of the 21st century and causing a significant disturbance in our life. And stay home orders are very effective in controlling the pandemic spread. And um, those orders might support quicker economic recovery. Um, and also, um, despite short-term economic challenges, stay home orders are vital for long-term public health and economic stability. And so there has been um, previous EE models in covering the SIR model. So SIR model is an uh, epidemiology model. And so it's uh, basically trying to model how individuals progress to different stages to our pandemic. And as so here you can see, um, uh, each compartment is like each stage during an epidemic. And then uh, the Latin symbol is the rate, how they're moving from one compartment to another. So for example, the beta rate is uh, the transmission rate when they're moving from susceptible to be uh, infectious. And then so uh, the E model in covering SIR aimed to optimize health expenditures, um, but uh, they didn't account for the impact of lockdown policies. And then for COVID-19, uh, the pandemic is more suited for an SEIR model. So basically we're adding another compartment called exposed. And then so therefore for our project, we propose an integrated EE model that optimizes lockdown policies by balancing disease control and, and economic growth. And then so for our project, we took um, data from like uh, various sources. So we took uh, US COVID-19 data from the Google Health uh, Open Data Repository. And then we also uh, took vaccination data from a paper from 2021. And then we also needed COVID-19 testing data and we took it from the US Department of Health and human services. And then, so now I'm gonna pass the mic over to Moon so he can talk more about our project. Hello. Hello. Did it stop echoing? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the uh, implementation of the economics model. So we're using a model called the FURPUS model, which is the, the main macroeconomic model used at the Federal Reserve Board that is still in use today. They use it to model and simulate like macroeconomic situations to like make predictions and stuff. And so how we're gonna implement it is the stay-at-home orders will decrease civilian employment, which intuitively makes sense, right? And then that decrease in civilian employment will affect other macroeconomic variables as modeled by the Ferber's model. And then the way that we're gonna assess like what's the harm is done to the economy is we're gonna use GDP loss as a metric. And the baseline for that is the scenario without any stay-at-home orders. That is defined to have zero GDP losses. And for like specific details on that is that we're gonna keep the labor market and accurate output identity sectors, which like civilian employment is one of like the many labor market variables and GDP is one of the many aggregated output identity sectors. We're gonna keep them, we're gonna let them vary, but while we keep the other variables the same. So like the, the model is gonna follow the trajectory it did in the pandemic. Wow, like we can assess like the effect of different stay at home orders on the economy. And the number of employed individuals is gonna decrease by 1.9% for every additional week of stay at home order that's in place. And for the pandemic simulation, we're gonna use something called the COVASIM model, which is the disease modeling framework developed by the Institute for Disease Modeling. Um, it's gonna take in a scenario of given like a transmission rate beta, which is gonna be affected by say at home order, the number of vaccination doses, the number of tests that like we took from like our data we presented earlier. And it's gonna output the 
epidemiological outcome, which is going to be number of infected people, number of deaths, etc. And then the implement implementation for that is what we're going to pick better to be 0 0.5 under the stay at home order, meaning that the virus only spread half as fast under the stay at home order compared to when no stay at home order is implemented. And we're going to run a simulation for 1 million people because we didn't have that much computational resources. So 1 million is like a good enough population that we could run. And just, and the other thing is the stay at home, all the scenarios are the same except for the stay home order. So like the testing, the vaccination and everything else is the same. The only thing that's changing is the stay at home orders. And we're going to connect the two models, the economic model and the EPDM epidemiology model using something called a DALI metric, which is the disability adjusted life years. So essentially one DALI is one lost year of healthy life. And we're gonna calculate the DALI metric um, using the step-by-step -step guide and disability wage for COVID-19 um, provided by the European Disease of Network Protocol. Um, so basically it means that for a certain state of disease, you're going to have a disability weight associated to like how rehabilitating that state is. And then, so one DALI is, we're going to transfer that to roughly around 95,000 US dollars, which is like um, the 1.46 times the average GDP per capita, which is like roughly the price, like you, how you define a DALI. And then once you have the DALI, it's, we're going to be able to convert the effect of the pandemic into USD, which is going to be the same metric as the economics model. So we can do optimization on it. And the way that we're going to do optimization is that we're going to start with an initial state home order. And the Covasim and Ferbus model is going to model how the state home orders will affect GDP and DALI. And then the gradient descent optimizer on top of it will try to identify a better order to minimize the total loss of DALI and should it be. So like, imagine like when you're trying to minimize the DALI loss, which is like the pandemic loss, you're essentially like increasing the GDP loss. So we're trying to find like a perfect kind of like balance between that. And we're gonna run the gradient descent optimizer for a number of epochs until like we cannot find like a better state home order. So that's like our best one that we could find. And after we ran it, we arrived at something around for $2 trillion for GDP loss and like around $9.8 trillion for DALI loss. And the optimal policy that um, our model found was uh, the stay at home policy should start around like the fifth week of 2020 and lasting for around like 15 weeks. And here's the plots if you want to see it. And the like uh, black. Uh, dotted line is like the baseline and like the color lines are like um, like the effects of the stay at home policy on the, the economy. And this is GDP and this is civilian employment. And this is the impact of the stay at home policy on the pandemic. Um, for example, like for accumulative infection here, um, you see like the, the gap is not that big, but like the scale is 1 million. So it's, it's quite significant there. Yeah, and the blue one is like no stay at home and the red one is like the best stay at home that we could find. And for like, to wrap it up, the few key results is most of the simulation that we ran, like the DALI just outweighs the economic loss. So that means like most of the time, we the priority should be controlling the pandemic over economic growth. Like, of course, we should keep that in mind that it's affecting economic growth, but like, basically you should prioritize the controlling the pandemic first and for a stay at home order policy so the more rigid the stay at home orders are the more effective it is at reducing transmission rate like for example if the transmission rate is reduced to 30 percent instead of 50 the duration of the stay at home order is going to be 12 instead of 15. so essentially if the state government or the federal government issue a more rigid order and people are actually cooperative we're we're gonna end up 
better because we're not going to be like stay home as long and like less people is going to die from it. Like the economy is just going to be better. And lastly, for future works, we're going to do more on disjointed localized stay at home periods to better manage the pandemic and economic recessions. What that means is um, essentially like if you have a county with a high number of infected people, it would make sense to issue stay home orders for local uh, counties and you know, instead of like a county is like 200 miles away, that wouldn't really make sense. But like, because of like the how, how the, the other two frameworks are built and like the time that we didn't have. So like, we couldn't really do that. It should, it can be like some interesting future works to be done. Um, thank, thank you very much for listening. Um, I'll answering question later in the chat. Thank you.